Okay. So, we forgot to start recording, so here's our prior examples. I'll leave those visible right here. So if I got y to the fourth minus one, it's a difference of two squares. So what I'm going to put in the front of each? y squared. And my signs would be, yeah, opposites plus and minus, one and one. Okay, that's not a big deal. But now look what we have. We've got something that might be able to break down from there. Is this the difference of two squares? Yeah, so let's take that part and we're gonna break it up. Because our goal is always to factor this down as much as we can, okay? So I took the difference of two squares, I factored that down into y plus one, y minus one, okay? Can I square, can I factor y squared plus one? No. If it's plus, I can't. You can't factor the sum of two squares. You can factor the difference, but you, you all right? I don't want you to have a neck injury here in my class, okay? You can factor the difference of two squares, but you can't factor the sum of two squares. Okay, the signs need to be opposite. Okay, so that would be our fully factored form. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and... Um, what if I did this? X to the fourth minus... 625. Go ahead and factor that all the way. And yes, 625 is a perfect square. While you're doing that, I'll go do attendance. Remember, your job is to factor it as far as you can. Can you factor this a second level? Yes, you can. Always make sure when you're done, you take a look at, hey, can I factor this even more? Okay, let's go on. Okay, so now I've got x to the fourth minus 625. Okay, you guys have already got this done. So x squared, x squared, plus 25, minus 25. It doesn't matter which one I put in front. No. Can x squared plus 25 be factored? No, not plus. The sum of two squares cannot be factored. Can x squared minus 25 be factored? Yes. Minus 5 plus 5. Say sweet if you got that. All right, nice job. Way to go. Okay. So, um, it would be possible, even though, you know, the book actually had it written this way, 625 minus x to the fourth. Could I, could I factor it that way? Yeah, it just if what happens that my 25s would go in the front, minus x squared plus x squared. And which one could be factored from there, the first one or the second one? First one. So I got 5 minus x, 5 plus x, and then I'd have 25 plus x squared. So just the numbers would be in front. Okay? If you really, 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 really don't like that, the numbers in the front, what are your options? You could take out a negative and rewrite it as x squared minus 625. Because it was a negative x to the fourth, I take out a negative, now it's positive x to the fourth. It was positive 625, now it's negative 625. And then you could factor it from there. But 
little flexibility is kind of nice to be able to do it either way. Okay, so more examples and we're almost done. So what if I had 2 y to the 4th minus 50? What's the first thing I would do? Take out a 2. Get y to the fourth minus 25. Okay. So now do I have a difference of two squares? Yes. So I get 2 y squared plus 5 y squared minus 5. Okay. So the 2 I can't break down. The y squared plus 5 I can't break down. Can I break down the y squared minus 5? I can't. That's not a perfect square. If it was a perfect square, I could break it down to another level. But we've got to have something we can break up to something times itself. Okay? So here we go. I want you to try this one. Um, this example. Let's go 6x to the 4th minus 96. Go. Back to it. What's the first thing I should do? Take out a 6. Okay. And that's what? 16? So now I've got the difference of two squares. Sweet! x squared plus 4, x squared minus 4. Can that be factored further? Yes, because it's a difference of two squares here on the back side. x squared plus 4, x minus 2, x plus 2. And does the order make a difference in what you write that in? Not at all, because it's multiplication, multiplication is commutative. Okay, so, so big emphasis. We're pulling back in difference two squares we talked about before. Pull out something first. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, take a look tonight at 514. Um, and I want to do, let's go 33 through 35, okay, fifty-five through sixty, and I'm going to have to do something here real quick. Um, Okay, and 62 through 68 even. On 68, I don't care what form you have it in. It says point slope form. You can put it in whatever form you want. Slope intercept form, standard form, you can do whatever you want. Okay, and then page 519. I'm going to change this just a little bit based on the time you have. Let's go... Um, 15 through 27, multiple of 3 only. Okay, I do want to show you one thing. If I ask you to solve this equation, 5x squared plus 15x equals 0, what would you do first? Take out a 5x. And if I take out a 5x, I'm left with x plus 3. So now what are my solutions? This one right here obviously is negative 3. Because that's what I can plug in to make that part 0. What's my solution from that? In other words, what can I plug in to make that part 0? Zero? 0. So whenever you have a variable that's hanging out front with nothing added or subtracted, your answer is just 0. Okay. If it was just 5, well then it wouldn't give me another solution. But if there's a 5x, my solution would be 0 and negative 3. Okay, you're going to need that 
on 55 through 60. Okay. Go. Go.